All the politics with the neighborhood, the real estate, all that is tied together. We talked about a book. There was a plan to break Venice up uh, systematically. And it's still out there and it exists uh, because I saw it at one of the town hall meetings that they had here. Oh, wow. Yeah. State your name and where you from? Armando Estrada, Venice, California. If somebody wanted to go to have the same sense of community or have, feel that same sense of community nowadays, anywhere, where, where, would, you, where would you point them? Where, where could they go for that sense of community that we had in Venice at one point in time? There is no place. I, I think Oakwood is unique in that, mm -hmm. or was unique in that. I, I don't see it anywhere. I think you leave, at least that I know of, but mm -hmm. I think once you leave a place that shows you all that in just that circumference and you go somewhere else, you don't see it. Mm -hmm. You don't see it. Even where I lived, you don't see it. You know, the neighbors, hey, how's it going? But pick up their paper and go inside. Yeah. Here, hey, how's it going? How's the family? Yeah. You know, so maybe I need to get out more. I don't know. But to me, Oakwood was the only place. Yeah. You know, so. No, I, I asked, too, because um, that's one thing that I, I've been searching for and looking for. Like where, you know, I don't have any kids yet. But when I do finally have kids one day, where? Where can I have that community? Where can I? Maybe I just have to build it again. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Start from had, scratch. Yeah, and I mean, I'm sure they're out there. Yeah. I'm sure you you you'll find one. But in in my heart, nothing will ever be like Oakwood. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Um, Penmar back then had a guy named Marty Gilbert started baseball association, and they had, but it was it had nothing to do with the park. It was just the baseball program, mm -hmm. and it had that close knit family tie, mm -hmm. like Oakwood. But other than that, I mean, that died years ago. Other than that, no, yeah. nothing, man. I think in my 19 years, I've gone to maybe double the funerals in years with young people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it kind of takes a toll on you after a while because these are kids that you watch, you know, T-ball, Little League, and you, they become like your family. They become like your, your, your kids almost. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you start going to these funerals, you start becoming numb. But then you still have to remember that there's other kids that need to be saved. So you keep going and you keep coming back. Yeah. Most of it was pre-war. Okay. Um, so yeah, it, I mean, it's tough, man, yeah. uh, to lose kids. Like I said, they, they start to become a part of you, you know, because these are kids that you see every day. Mm -hmm. You interact with them and their families. So, you know, and you give them advice and, you know, they come to you and ask you for advice. It, it's really tough. People that work in rec centers don't get enough credit. And because think about this, parents will drop the kids off and you're stuck with this person or these people that are trying to show you and teach you. Sometimes the parents don't have time. They're running late from work. So now you're spending extra time with these people. So, yeah, man, it's it's like babysitting on steroids and. That's why I was going to become a police officer. But that's a whole different story. We were talking before off camera that, like, because you said there's been a lot of people that you've gone to funerals and stuff like that. Um, why do you think that Venice as a community nowadays is more so only gets together and celebrates, like, and gets together when somebody dies as opposed to just to get together because of the love of, that we have within our community? You know, that is a great question, and I don't have an answer for that because, I, you know, the other day um, I was thinking, God, if people were to celebrate life, um, if people were to, a pre-burial mm -hmm. while the person is still here, I mean, the love that they could feel would be way different. We always say I love you after they've past mm -hmm. it's too late then yeah. they don't know yeah um and that's why i always try to instill that make yeah. sure you tell people you love them yeah. hey, you never know yeah. life is way too short see a person today and tomorrow they're gone yeah so I, I i i hope that maybe that works out for that's something that you should start yeah you know just a day of love of hanging out yeah. uh to appreciate each other yeah 
Um, yeah, so I'm gonna task you with that, man, okay. on camera. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And since we're on camera, I'll tell you, because I've never told you before, but I do love you, Mondo, and I appreciate, appreciate you, everything that appreciate you've done. Likewise, you know, man. Thank because, you. Because, uh, you know, there's people like you in the community that I think has just helped shape the, um, the experience of our childhood and just, um, you know, our, our experience at Oakwood. You know what I mean? Um, so... You know, it's uh, it doesn't go unnoticed, and I def definitely don't think you guys got paid enough. I don't know what y'all got paid, but I don't think y'all got paid enough because enough. there was, um, you know, just, you guys were almost uh, for a lot of people the second parents. You know I mean the second guardian for yeah. for for you know for us from the time Oakwood opened until eight o'clock p.m. when it closed or whatever. Yeah. You know, so yeah. yeah. Appreciate it, man. But yeah, I, you know, and I like to Tommy Stokes. You guys say a prayer for him. He's not doing too well. Uh, Vic Martin, rest in peace. Cleo Martin, Margaret Martin, uh, Patty. Um, these were people that were here mm -hmm. for the community. Yeah. And uh, man, I, I don't like. You start piggybacking, piggybacking off each other. Mm -hmm. Like you see them try something and it works, so you try it with. And when you have great teachers like that, I mean Rob Haskin, all the people that I've mentioned that worked here. Great leaders, man. Great people at heart. Yeah. Uh, not just because they had a job here, but because they loved what they did. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Lee Campbell. I forgot Lee. Yeah. Uh, Valentina. You know, the list goes on. Yeah. But, um, yeah, Oakwood will always be my first home. Yeah. You know, um, and I'm always welcomed here, which is great. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Do you feel like the community field that was once was in Venice is ever going to come back to Venice? No. 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 You think I, those people will never be able to afford to come back here? Or? Yeah. It's it's un it, it's too high. Real estate is ridiculous right now. Yeah. The only way that'll happen if some catastrophe happens, some gigantic earthquake that scares people and they move out mm -hmm. and people buy in. But other than that, no. So speaking of real estate, do you know anybody that's from Venice that bought property in Venice? I don't. You don't? No. Nope. Wow. Why do you think that is? Why do you think nobody bought? Because I would imagine, like, I remember my parents lived on Westminster between, uh, uh, I believe it was 5th and 6th, and they said they had a property that with a backyard um, and a front yard that was going for maybe a few hundred thousand, maybe $300,000 tops back mm -hmm. then. But you go 20 years from before that, you know, in the 70s and stuff, right. you might have had properties going for 50,000, 40,000, 30,000. Of your generation, why do you think people didn't buy property? I think I think my generation was mesmerized with the money. Hmm. Um, the money that was being made out in the streets, the fast money. So yeah. when you're making that type of money and working that type of job, mm -hmm. you can't buy a house. You don't have a real job. You don't have collateral. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it was missed. I know we had plenty of conversations out there where Stokes would tell them, what, what are you guys spending your money on? Rims and cars? Buy property. But, you know, when you're getting fast money, that's not a priority to you. For so. sure. Was that something that was never, uh, um, was that something that you were never curious in about getting fast money that way? Nah. No. Nah, nah, okay. nah. Was it because you've seen the effects or what, why, why was it never, because so, so many people from the hood got into that. Well, Enterprise. So why, why, why wasn't something that you were curious about or interested in? Well, number one, um, the effects, yeah. But I'm telling you, my mom is 5'2", but Jesus Christ. Uh, that lady's a giant in my eyes. So that was one thing. Yeah. And I never wanted to disappoint. Yeah. And I'm the oldest of five. Oh, wow. And I figured, okay, if I start going, where are they going to follow? Mm -hmm. Right? And like I said, I started working up here at 18. Mm -hmm. So now... You're a kind of a role model that these kids are looking up to. Mm -hmm. So what are they going to say? Yeah, my uh, my coach is out there selling dope. You know. Yeah. So what are they going to do? You yeah. can't tell me that I'm doing wrong if you're doing wrong. Yeah. So you know, um, I tried to stay as positive as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So yeah. that was pretty much it, man. Oakwood Park. Um, I, I don't know if you heard about this before, but the name change. What do you think about that? It was like something with the, with the Tabor family. Yeah. Do you think that it, do you think that it should have a name change, or do you think Oakwood Park should always be Oakwood Park? Oakwood Park should be Oakwood Park. Yeah. Um, that's what it's 
built its name on yeah. Oakwood. Yeah. The Tabers, you know, God bless them, and they have Abbey Kinney. Yeah. Oakwood, I mean, that's years ago, yeah. decades ago. Yeah. Why rename the park? Yeah. I, I think what they're trying to do is remove the stigma mm. that it carries. But this is history, and this is what Venice was built on. Yeah. So you're trying to erase something, just like the church. Mm -hmm. You know, they're steadily moving things that belong to the neighborhood. Yeah. Um, but money talks. Yeah. But, you know, if, if you're going to do that and change it into another name, change it into someone that, and not me, mm -hmm. Tommy Stokes, Rob Haskins, Mr. Featherstone, mm -hmm. um, someone from the community that put in a lot of work here. Yeah. Melvin Hayward. Yeah. Big one. Mel Melvin Hayward was a champion for the kids. Yeah. You know, that was one of my mentors, too. Yeah. And shout out to uh, Melvin Jr. He's doing great stuff. Yeah. With the youth. Um, but, yeah, do it where there's feeling of roots. Yeah. That people know why that name was there. Tabor, what have they done for, you know, anybody in the last 50, 100 years? Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's just my opinion. Yeah, no, for sure. And I agree with that because, um, you know, Oakwood is something that my whole generation grew up on. Even three, four generations before us grew up on that same right. name. And, uh, you know, um, there's a there's quote unquote a bad stigma with the Oakwood area. But I think that's only from outsiders that don't understand it and right. don't know it because everybody that was here and grew up here is it's. It's a positive light, you know. This was our play. This was our home away from home, you know. On Saturdays, I, as a kid, I come up here play play basketball. You know, before yeah. everybody started the game, I'm shooting around. You yeah. know, yeah. Um, but yeah. So, have you ever been to any other um, recreation parks aside from the Boys and Girls Club in Oakwood? Have you I, been? I've been to a lot. So, you know, when you're coaching baseball, you you make all stars. Yeah. Your teams go, or or we travel to uh, regionals or championship games. So we've traveled to the valley. Um, a lot of parks. Wow. And as soon as they hear Oakwood Park, oh my God, how do you guys do it? Yeah. It's the rec center yeah. with kids. I will always say, every time we left, our kids, you know, I don't understand how you guys get that bad name. You guys have great kids, great athletes. Mm -hmm. Come by. Yeah. But then they come up and the fellas are hanging out and they get scared. But no one's worried about you. Come yeah. on in. Yeah. And it was plenty of times where we've had other, like I said, Jerry West was here. Mm -hmm. I was out in the front and I was like, oh man, Jerry West. Hmm. And he walked up. He's all, gentlemen, walked right in, sat down. Nobody bothered him wow. except for autographs, but yeah. nobody bothered him. Was that after he played for the Lakers or during his time playing? No, no, this was after. Okay. Because okay. his grandson was up here. Okay. Wow. So uh, his grandson played for uh, Pacific Palisades All-Stars. Wow. Yeah, and like I said, um, Kobe's mom and dad used to be up here on a regular mm -hmm. all the time. Cause, uh, so they're really good friends with Coach Slappy. Mm. Oh, uh, yeah, I remember, I remember him, him being up here training yeah, and stuff. Yeah, so I'm glad he was brought up. Coach Slappy, great guy. George Davis brought him up here to train George Jr., it's my cousins. Yes. And they asked Robert, hey, can we use part of the gym? And he was like, absolutely. So after they worked out, George said, hey, Slappy, what if you can use the gym to train your guys? Now, he trained college and pro and regular kids, but most of his uh, people that he trained were NBA stars and college stars. Mm -hmm. um, he said, what if you can use the gym free of charge and you train our kids for free? Hmm. He said, I'll bring it up to Rob. And I'm thinking, ooh, that's going to be great. And Slappy was like, absolutely. I don't care how many kids come. And it went through. And for years, Slappy trained our kids for free here. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, he's got a YouTube uh, story out. Check him yeah, out. Yeah, I think I, I, think I yeah. went across it. Yeah. So, yeah, um, great guy, man. I, he just called me last week. So, okay. yeah, man. Those are the type of things that you want for your community. Yeah. You know, you build rapport with other people, and then other people start showing up. You you had a little stint thinking of wanting to join the police force, uh, and that was basically to kind of help the community? Yeah. You know, a after a while, it's like a losing battle. Mm -hmm. Because you can give all the advice you want, but that $100 bill is a lot more powerful to young kids. Yeah. So... 
yeah, I'm going to tell you, hey, go get a summer job. Or, hey, we can make money this way. Go get a little business on the side, gardening, mowing your neighbor's lawns. That's not going to cut it when they're telling them, hey, man, go do this and I'll give you 500 bucks. I'm losing. Yeah. You know, after the games, come on, we're going to buy the whole team ice cream. I, I, I think, like I said, I got exhausted of the funerals. Mm -hmm. And I figured I can make a, a change in, in the community. Although it was Santa Monica, it was close enough yeah. to where they can say, well, he came from here. Yeah. Something positive can happen. Um, but I got kidney stones in month four. Oh, so they sent send me home. So oh. there went that and I didn't pursue it anymore. But yeah, um, but that was my end goal. Yeah. When I got hired there, um, I was supposed to work the PAL program mm -hmm. with kids. Oh. It would have been right up my alley. Now just sit and type and yeah. get fat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not working with the kids no more? Just no, home? I have not. Um, once I left uh, Boys and Girls Club in 2007, mm -hmm. 2008 was, I went back for one year. And we had a championship year, and I was like, I'm leaving on a high note. Plus, I have three girls. Yeah. And you kind of raise other people's kids, but not your own. Mm -hmm. And I thank God for my wife that she was there to, you know, and she understood, you know, she's from out here, so she she understood. But as a parent, you miss a lot of moments, yeah. you know. So, yeah, I wanted to spend more time with them. Yeah. I get that. Briefly, we talked about it right before we came in here. Um, that story where you said there was a, a gun that went off and in coming into Oakwood. <laughs> how, how, how does that happen? Like, can you tell the story? Yeah, so this was during the war. Okay. And back then, everyone had guns. Yeah. And I remember we were in the office. Um, Stokes was going over the books because mm -hmm. it was uh, baseball season, and we were we were getting ready to order uniforms. So he was going over the books um, to see what we needed. And Vic Martin uh, was standing by our safe, mm -hmm. and I don't know what happened, but a guy comes running in. I'm not going to na name him. He comes running in. He trips, gun flies out, boom. Damn. Bullet hole two inches from Vic. Damn. And we just, we were in shock. We just stood there. And as soon as the gun went off, he ran out. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, talk about dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I know after that incident happened, um, the fellas had a meeting off limits in here. Mm. And you know, yeah. which is great. And here's here's the thing: not to discredit the fellas, because a few years when a lot of the kids from the community couldn't afford, they paid mm. for everything. Wow. Yeah, uniforms, shoes, you name it, uh, all-star jackets. Yeah. So I was like the uh, the, the 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 hood sponsor in the hood. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, again, you're up against the rock in a hard place, as they say, up against with the sword and the wall, because you're trying to fight the kids following them, mm -hmm. but then here they are sponsoring. And it wasn't like they came to Stokes and said, hey, uh, we want to do this. They would just do it. Mm. What are you going to do? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. It was nice of them, but, you know, again, that kind of gives them more power. Yeah. And you're like, all right. Let's try harder next time. <laughs> yeah. You know, so. Curious to know, what, what do you think the community of Venice would have been um, if crack never would have came into the neighborhood? Thriving. Thriving. I think it would have been thriving. Still. Still. Mm -hmm. Still to this day. Like I said, Venice was a family-oriented community. Everybody knew everybody. Mm -hmm. You can walk down the street, ride your bike, wave at people. You know, you're messing up. They're going to call your parent or they're going to call you your ass over here yeah and you know what the repercussions are but now there's like you know we spoke people aren't friendly yeah so there's no rapport to make you know um and when you don't have that you kind of lose that knit that you've assembled yeah so you know once you fragment something it loses yeah. it starts decaying and it never comes back unfortunately yeah. You yeah, know, for sure. so and, and the other thing is during every sports season, Stokes would make us walk 
the community and hand out flyers. I don't know if you remember that. Hmm. But we would, we would start on California, and we would put flyers in every mailbox about Oakwood sports. Wow. And, you know, you get to talk to people. Yeah. It's kind of like a community policing yeah. without policing. Yeah. But you get to meet people, and then they come up here. Because you know your neighbors. You have to know them. Right. Yeah. But it's not like that now. Like, you know, people won't even talk to you, so. Yeah. 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 And the the, the recreation, um, the recreational sports are, are dying out, too. I mean, you could tell the, the, how, how much the community has left, from, even from my generation, because, you know, I came back coached one year, and it was like barely some teams, you know, three, yeah. four teams, maybe. Yeah. You know, and so yeah. you don't really have the kids out here like you used to have the kids back then. No, but, you know, the other crazy thing is a lot of parents would bring their kids to Oakwood to play. Mm -hmm. Not to brag, but I'm going to brag. Oakwood sports programs were top notch. Yeah. If your kid was mediocre, he was leaving here a great athlete. Yeah. That's, that's just the way it was. Um, we had a lot of people in the community that came and supported and put a lot of time into these kids. And, um, you know, we have kids that have played uh, pro football. Uh, Lee, who used to uh, work here and uh, played softball here, mm -hmm. she played in the Olympics. Really? Has Lee a gold did. medal. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then Charles Gordon played pro. Luan Ramsey played pro, went to USC. Um, I'm missing a couple. And God. Oh, Gabe. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. you know, but this is because of the community. Yeah. You know, and, and you don't have that anymore. Yeah. Uh, the other night I came out here for a balloon, like I was telling you off camera, for Shawnee. And we have grown men playing kickball out there. No kids. Yeah. And I'm thinking... I mean, yeah, adults should, you know, have recreation. But at this time, back then, mm -hmm. Oakwood was packed with kids. Yeah. And it's not like that anymore. Yeah. You know? Adults couldn't play because the kids would be playing. Yeah. <laughs> the whole day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your day was Sunday. Yeah. Sunday, the field was clear. You can come up there. But now the field is nothing but adults. Mm -hmm. I mean, on Saturdays I've been up here, no one's up here. Mm -hmm. No one's utilizing the gym. No one from the community, anyways. Yeah. But like you said, there's not enough kids, and I don't know what, you know, what it is. But Oak was not a draw anymore, and it's sad. Yeah, yeah. I think people just, you know, it's just uh, too hard of a commute for them. I guess you know what I mean. They're not before they have to get up on San Juan or get up on Santa Clara or Westminster or Brooks or Indiana and just walk here ten minutes tops. Now, now it's a 30, 40 minute drive, and they're like, uh, I'm not gonna do it. You know. But look, man. Like I said, I lived out in the South Bay. Mm -hmm. And when I used to take my girls or my niece now, mm -hmm. we come here. Yeah. With all the parks in our surroundings, I come back home. Yeah. Because I know that it's going to be empty, number one. Mm -hmm. And I know everybody. Yeah. So I'm okay. Well, not everybody now, but, yeah. you know, from the past. Yeah. And I feel comfortable here and yeah. I feel safe here. But, um, I, I, I wish people would start utilizing the field, the gym, and playing, bringing their kids back at Oakwood yeah. and, and, and understand that it's still here. It, yeah. You know, it needs love. Hell, it needs some kids' love. Yeah. So um, hopefully in the, in the future that happens. I think that Oakwood gets a bad rap. Mm -hmm. uh, Venice gets a bad rap. And yeah, there's pockets in every community. Mm -hmm. but for the most part, there's good people that have come from here. Yeah. And... Uh, Hopefully, you know, things change. Um, not that they're bad now, mm -hmm. but that they're more inclusive. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, we see more kids out here mm -hmm. enjoying the facilities, not grown-ups. Although, yeah, we all need it, yeah. but <laughs> the kids, they, they need that outlet. Get them off from behind that computer yeah. and um, get them out there. Yeah. I wanted to ask about um, the, the gang injunctions. Um, how, how do you feel like that changed Oakwood? So we used to have a midnight league up here. Mm -hmm. Midnight? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, way before your time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> so we used to have a midnight league up here, and most of the games wouldn't finish because we'd get raided. Hmm. And they would just pull everybody out. They had me out there on my knees with a city badge. But this was when Crash was out. Ah, uh, okay. So... We couldn't really do anything because everyone was a gang member, you know. Yeah. And to be fair, 
everyone was a gang member. But yeah. it didn't mean that they were doing wrong or that they had a warrant or anything. Yeah. But if you were here, you couldn't be here. So now you were putting them back out in the street when they're here watching basketball or playing basketball. Yeah. So two-edged sword. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man, um, it was unconstitutional, number one. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's a different story. Do you think it made a lot of the, the, the people from the neighborhood stop coming because of that? They just didn't want to get fucked with by the, by the <sighs> law enforcement? Yeah, that was one reason, um, a, a big reason. But I mean, I, I don't think it ever stopped mm -hmm. them from coming. Um, some, they, they got tired of being harassed. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, people kept coming. Yeah. I mean, you know, this is home and you're going to do something other than get in trouble. Yeah. And here it was safe haven. Mm -hmm. Like I said, all that is tied together. All the politics with the neighborhood, the real estate, all that is tied together. Yeah. Uh, so we talked about a book. Mm -hmm. There was a plan to break Venice up mm -hmm. uh, systematically. And it's still out there and it exists uh, because I saw it at one of the town hall meetings that they had here. Oh, wow. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah. It is what it is. Can you tell me the most valuable lesson that you've ever learned in your life? Regrets. 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 I, I, I think us not trying to follow our dreams or regretting things and going after what we want because failure is in our mind. And we think, ah, I'm going to fail. Who cares? Who cares? Go after it. And if you fail, you try again. Um, you're not going to build anything without failure. So fail as many times as you have to, but get there. Take a deep breath and start over. Um, go to school. Stay in school. Although it's expensive, yeah. it's the push. It took me, I, I got my bachelor's when I was 35. Wow. Yeah. What made you go back? My kids. Hmm. You got to set a, a bar for them. Yeah. So well, daddy could do it. You you yeah. you got to do it. Yeah, their their mom is a psychologist. Wow. So she kept going. I was like, eh, <laughs> that's enough. I couldn't stay up anymore. So I was working uh, at USC, mm -hmm. and I was working here and going to school. Yeah. So I would be up till like four in the morning, go to sleep till like five thirty, get up, shower, go back to work, and do it all over again. It's like a nap. How do you even function? Uh, exactly. God. <laughs> I think that's where my kidney stones come from because coffee used to be my best friend, man. Yeah. And God, yeah. yeah. But I, I made it. Yeah. And that's why I tell you because I'm not a great math student mm -hmm. and it took me two classes to get past that, but I didn't quit. And I know friends were like, man, you're just wasting your money. Nah. Had I not finished that, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. It's not nowhere big, but it's somewhere I wouldn't be without it. Yeah. So, yeah. don't quit. For sure. Appreciate your time, Hondo. Man. Thank you. If you like this video, subscribe to GB Local.